thank you very much for being with us. And just first of all, the march uh, you're threatening now if no new elections are announced. What, what do you hope to achieve? Well, Mark, what every uh, Democrat hopes to achieve from a peaceful uh, uh, protest, uh, what I hope to achieve is to show the whole of the country that the people of this country want one thing, elections. They do not want uh, a foreign imposed government on uh, uh, where uh, members of our party were bought by a uh, million dollars each who was offered to them to switch sides. Uh, and then uh, the government was removed. And so therefore we feel that rather than someone else imposing a government on our country, let the people of this country decide whoever they want uh, uh, to, to lead them. But you were toppled, you say, by a Western conspiracy. You called it, I think, US-backed regime change. I mean, it's quite a claim. What evidence do you have? What do you base that claim on? Well, as a prime minister, I get a cipher. Cipher is, the, is a secret uh, a message sent by your ambassadors. They are sent to the foreign office. It's like in WikiLeaks. You know, WikiLeaks was when they broke the code. So the secret messages were relayed to the public. So I get a cipher from my ambassador in the U.S. And he it's an official meeting he has with this American undersecretary or whatever, Donald Liu. And me as the prime minister, I'm reading, I'm reading this cipher. And it says that unless you remove your prime minister through this vote of no confidence, which hadn't been tabled as yet, there will be consequences for Pakistan. And if you remove him, all will, will be forgiven. Now, this, this is what me as a prime minister reading this cipher. And I am the chief executive. Who, who was he asking to have me removed? So the next day after this meeting, this meeting, official meeting with no takers, with minutes between our ambassador in the Washington and this uh, American official, Donald Liu, next day, the no confidence motion is tabled in our National Assembly. And then uh, members of our party, which I told you were, uh, had offered, were offered these huge sums to switch sides, they start leaving our party, our allies leaving our, uh, leave our party. And just to remind you that at this time, in the last two years, Pakistan's growth rate was 5.6% uh, last year. This time was 6%. It is one of the highest growth rates in, in, in Pakistan's history. Right. Our industry was, uh, uh, was booming. Exports record, remittances record, tax collection record. Uh, we cope with uh, the coronavirus. We are considered one of the five top countries yeah. which saved the people and uh, our economy and our poor people from the virus. So there was no reason for the government suddenly to be removed because uh, since, well, since we've been removed, by the way, the economy has gone in a tailspin. The, the U.S. completely deny this. And you say that the U.S. wanted you out because of your foreign policy, which was increasingly anti-Western and clearly favoring uh, China and Russia. Do you regret the ties with Russia, specifically given what's happened in Ukraine? Mark, uh, in that cipher, Donald Rue is asking our ambassador that did it, that, that the Prime Minister Imran Khan was solely responsible for his decision to tour Russia. Now, the ambassador kept trying to explain to him that this was a, 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 a tour which was planned long way back, long yeah. way before Ukraine. Secondly, all stakeholders, the foreign office, the military establishment, we were all on one page because the military wanted hardware. We wanted to buy uh, uh, gas from, because we got depleting gas reserves. We wanted to, and this was six years ago, this contract was being negotiated. And we wanted is, to buy uh, Imran, uh, uh, wheat from Russia. So the, the problem, so, no, but let me just get coming. The problem is that on the very day that Putin invaded Ukraine, you shook hands with him in the Kremlin. That suggests if, you know, at least that you endorse what he's doing in Ukraine. Mark, how the hell was I supposed to know 
the day I landed in uh, in Moscow, he was going to Putin was going to uh, go into Ukraine. But, but remember, my to statement, ahead with the even then, from my statement as Moscow was, I have never believed in military solutions. So never did I endorse that. Ours was a totally a bilateral uh, a meeting. It was planned long before. So point I'm but, trying to make is that we didn't realize that when I when I would reach there, that the, uh, Putin would go into Ukraine. How was I supposed to know? And how could you be punished for that? But do you accept that what Russia is doing is an illegal act of aggression? Do you condemn what Russia is doing? Mark, I am against all military operations. I was against Iraq war. I was against U.S. going into Afghanistan consistently. I'm against military solutions in Ukraine to solve problems. But point I'm trying to make is that to hold me responsible, and, and in this cipher, it was only me being held responsible, while our ambassador was telling us that this was a long, a, 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 a long before the store was planned, the purpose of going there were bilateral things. But, we had nothing to do with But no, even so, no the Ukraine problem is, the, but the problem is that the ties you have with Russia and China suggest that you went ahead with that meeting that human rights are secondary to trade for you. Russia is waging a war on its neighbor, killing civilians. China has a terrible record on human rights, repressing the Uyghurs and other minorities. Uh, Mark, I was elected by 220 million people of Pakistan to serve them. My number one priority is there are 50 million Pakistanis below the poverty line. I, I was not elected for them to to, to correct all the wrongs that are going on in the world. My responsibility was my country. And so all my relationships, whether it was with China, with the United States, with uh, uh, Russia, were for the benefit of our own people. Listen, uh, in Kashmir, which is a, uh, a, a dispute between Pakistan and India, India has violated all United Nations resolutions on Kashmir. They've illegally taken away the right of the Kashmiri people and, and basically uh, got rid of the statehood. Now, did anyone speak against it? The atrocities going on in Kashmir, 100,000 people in Kashmiris have died. Has anyone condemned India for that? No, because the India is an ally. Allow us to be neutral too so that we can look after our own people. What about Afghanistan? Are you, are you pleased to see the Taliban back in control in Afghanistan. Were you pleased to see the West defeated? Mark, Afghanistan was, there was never going to be a military solution. Anyone who knows the history of Afghanistan and the British above all, have experienced three wars in Afghanistan, the three times they've gone into Afghanistan in the 19th century, twice in 19th and once in the 20th century. There was never going to be a military solution. People like us who kept saying that this is not, you will not solve Afghanistan problem by bombing them or, or sending your military. We were called pro-Taliban. Uh, people like us were always talking about how would there be people in Afghanistan. For 40 years, they've been suffering. Mark, this is not a football match, whether you're on one side or the other. When Afghanistan, when there are problems there, the country that suffers most is Pakistan. Because we, sub, we already have three and a half billion Afghan refugees there. But you said that you said the chains of slavery had been broken in the country. What when the Americans left but and the British? Left, was, what did you mean by that? That was deliberate. It was deliberately distorted. I was speaking in Urdu. I was talking about getting rid of mental slavery, we still have the colonial education system with elite re is, is uh, taught in English medium. I was, we had first time in our history had one syllabus for everyone. And I said that mental, mental slavery is far worse than physical slavery. In that context, I, I refer to Afghanistan, but, where physical, you know, right. uh, the fighting for their freedom. What uh, about the slavery of women? Are, they, are you concerned that they seem to be going back on their commitment to allow girls back to school, and they're now insisting women cover their faces. Are you worried at all about what is happening there? Mark, I am not responsible or a spokesman for the Taliban. If there was any other solution, after 20 years of war, well, 
There should have been. You should have found some solution. But Pakistan that, has that, supported the that, Taliban. That, that, how? By, Who says this? By harboring Taliban fighters inside Pakistan. Do you know something, Mark? There is so much propaganda and ignorance about this whole Pakistan-Afghanistan situation. Pakistan lost 80,000 people. No country where supported the U.S. in the war on terror gives as many sacrifices as we did. The only reason we lost 80,000 people was because we joined the U.S. war on terror. Because the U.S. was trying to find a military solution in Afghanistan where none existed, we were blamed. A country that gives sacrifices, we were blamed for the lack of success in Afghanistan. We, what is happening in Afghanistan has nothing to do with us. The fact is that a war in Afghanistan meant five million refugees at the beginning in the 80s. We have three and a half million refugees. We had what were the Pakistan Taliban who were fighting against our state. We still have terrorism as a result of participating in the U.S. war. For Pakistan to be blamed. There are three and a half million refugees. Mark, how do you stop? How do we know who, is, uh, who would go across and, and, uh, and be with the Taliban? How? Right. So Pakistan, fenced, first time we fenced our border. There was open border before. So in our three and a half years, we have fenced the border. But Please do not blame Pakistan. Pakistan is the collateral damage of Afghanistan. Okay. Just finally, um, on the elections you want, do you think that people power, you're talking about two million people, do you honestly think that people power can, can take you back to power? I don't, I'm not showing the uh, two million people coming out in Islamabad so I would get back into power. All we are saying is that this... Uh, there are two problems. One is that this is an imposed government through a, a regime change by Washington. Number two, they're criminals. 60% of the cabinet is on bail. The prime minister and the chief minister were about to be sentenced when they were made the chief minister and prime minister. It's an insult to this country. All we are doing is peaceful protest. Okay. We feel let the people of Pakistan decide who they want to elect. Let's not have an imposed government from outside. OK, well, as I say, the Americans deny that. But uh, listen, Imran Khan, thank you very much for being with us this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Mark.